I'm going to run through using CONSERF to look at uh, structurally conserved regions and sequence conserved regions. So you can work out evolutionary conserved profiles using this CONSERF online server. So this will point out regions that undergo large amounts of change or that are well conserved. And then of course there's average regions that fall in between the two. The reason that well-conserved regions are important is they're likely to be functionally significant. Now, what does significance mean? Well, it could mean that they're important and they cannot change because they are part of the structural integrity of the protein. If you made any substantial changes, uh, then you would change the structure and affect the structure. Alternatively, it could be that they're involved in molecular function. So if it's an enzyme, it could be in the catalytic site. Uh, if they're in recognition molecule, then it's part of the recognition site. Now, profiles can be calculated in CONSERF using either structures, uh, sequences, or a combination of the two. The case that we're going to consider is the evolution of neuraminidase. So influenza A is characterized by the subtypes of the two glycolytic enzymes, which are hemagglutinin and neuraminidase. When the virus shifts between different subtypes, this is called an antigenic shift. Now the different subtypes are characterized because they have different antibody recognition patterns. So the evolution between these different antigenic uh, variants is not completely understood. We often attribute it to being the result of many single nucleotide polymorphisms, but it's not completely clear that this is how it's happening. Within subtypes, it's a lot easier to understand because that definitely is the process of single nucleotide uh, substitutions and occasional deletions and insertions. And that's the process that we call antigenic drift. So they drift, that's the variability within a subtype, and the shift is between the subtypes. So they seem to have distinct evolutionary processes because the shifts happen fairly rarely. So the idea that I want to test out is, can I analyze the differences in the conservation profiles between the different and neuraminidase subtypes? So I'll find out which features are in common between all of them and which ones are different. And then I can use these differences to try and figure out how those differences might have evolved. And then I can come up with a mechanism of how those differences arose. There are structures available from multiple subtypes. There's also a lot of sequence information, so I don't have to worry about either of those. And CONSERF is a useful tool for doing this analysis. Now, I'm just going to start with a structural analysis and searching the PDB database for influenza A neuraminidase results in 2,291 different structures. So here are the first 25 of the 2,291 sequences that uh, it's found when I search for influenza A and neuraminidase. So this first one is an N9 neuraminidase. The second one's N9. Uh, this one is not telling me which N it is, and neither is this one. This is an N1. And... So I'm going to start with the N9s, so that's one NNB. So if I go into CONSERF, the CONSERF database, then I can put in the name of that particular uh, structure, which is one NNB. I wait for it to do the search. Right, chain A. 
that's going to reload that particular uh, sequence. So you can see here the different colors. So the yellow ones correspond to the structures not very well defined in these particular regions, which sometimes happens. Uh, the blue ones are the most conserved, particularly these dark blues. And then the red, uh, sorry, the blue ones are the most variable, particularly these dark blue ones, and the pink ones are the most conserved. So this region here is particularly well conserved, so between 141 and 151 in this particular numbering. You can look at all of the different parameters and things that were set up for it to do this analysis. And I'm just going to download all of those files so that I've got a complete record of what happened. So now I want to run the thing again. So I'm going to go and open another conserve window. I'm going to conserve here in the conserve uh, server, web server, which looks slightly different to the one that I just used. That's fine. Now, first thing, just as a test to look at the reliability and the reproducibility, this is an N9, this is another N9. I'm going to put this one in and I should get exactly the same results. So this is just a little benchmarking test to make sure that the program is behaving itself in the way that I think it should. It's always a good idea to do this with bioinformatics just to know that your tool is giving you the kind of answers that you want. So one NNA. Let's put that one in here. One, NA. Pre, oh, they've got pre-calculated uh, thing in the database. So I press this, and I get this result. Now, how does, whoops, how does that result look to my compared to my other one? So this is the NNB. This is the NNA. only real there's a slight difference because of the binding of the uh, substrate between the two molecules but it doesn't change the profile at all so that's good just the image change because the structures are slightly different because they were done in a slightly different way because one has the inhibitor and one doesn't so As well as doing uh, using the conserve server to do it that way, what I could have done is said that there was no known structure. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in an H9 sequence. So if I put in the sequence, it will then do an analysis of the database, find the sequences, and then construct this cons conservation pattern based on the conservation of amino acids in the sequences. Uh, so what I'm going to do is get a sequence, which in this case is going to be a nucleotide sequence. So I'm going to get a sequence from a file I've got of all of the neuraminidase oldest sequences. So here's that particular file. So this is the N2, the N11, the N3, the N4, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, and 6. Uh, you take it, I've taken them to be the oldest sequences for each. So the N1 is a 1900 sequence. The N6 was in 1956. What I'm looking for is the N9, which arose, arose in 1968 in a turkey in Wisconsin. So this is the particular sequence that I want. So 
I need to highlight this particular sequence. And I need to then paste it in here. Just check that I've got all of the sequence and it's the right one. Yes, that looks fine. Let's hope that's going to work. Um, I'm not going to do any modeler modeling, but if you happen to have uh, a modeler code, then you can. Mini days N9, my email address. And I'm going to submit with the default parameters and then see what happens. Now this process can take a long time, so I'm going to pause here for a minute. So I waited and waited and waited and I got no response using the nucleotide sequence. So what I'm going to do is go and get that sequence from the NCBI as a protein sequence and see if that will work. So what I'm looking for is the H5N9 from 1968 in uh, Wisconsin. So if I go back to here and I want the Na protein and I want how it's going to be from H5 and this is the N9. I want full length only and I'm going to set collection date until 1970 and show results and hopefully uh, that will give me one. So that's the Turkey Wisconsin. So here it is one that I need so I could have selected that so download the protein faster I don't care about changing the thing so I've got that faster file so now if I view that sequence in notepad plus plus I can highlight it and then I can paste that into Conserve and it's definitely an amino acid one now. I'm going to still call it Neuraminidase A9 because that's what it is. And I set my email and submit with the default parameters and hopefully this time it will work. So that took a very long time, but at least it did complete. So now we can go and look at the results <coughs> based on the sequence. So here, of course, there isn't a structure. This is just the sequence based profile. And I can look at that and then I can look at the one that comes from the structure. Um, so we have this region, this ILRTQE, whatever it is. I-R-R-T-Q-E-S-E-C-V. So this bit is strongly conserved in both the structure and the sequence. So that's that bit there. But the rest of it is a bit different. So here's the bit that they've defined as uh, vague in its sense of data which is in a different position to that that comes from the sequence. You also notice that the sequence one is only about 385 uh, long, but the true one should be 460 long. So you've got a large amount that's missing at the start of the sequence. Uh, so that's going to be the anchoring part of the molecule. So the part that people don't consider is very important because it doesn't take part in the actual catalytic activity of the molecule and so it's ignored for the crystal structures but it just makes the numbering completely different between the two of them. Now we've done this for N9 I need to repeat the process for the other ends. So if we go back to the RSCB there's another one here well actually first let's uh, download this set of files so that's the n9 ones based on sequence uh, so here is an n1 sequence which is 3cl2 
So if I go to home and open link in a new tab to get a new window, and I can do this one, 3CL2, wasn't it? Oops, not 2CL2, 3CL2. Mm. Three CLT. Chain identifier. Which chain do I wish to use? Don't think it matters. We'll pick A. There's already a pre-calculated concept because it's already in the database. So I can click on that and see what results I get. So here's the results for N1. And again, we see this ILTQ which is very similar to this one, the I-L-R-T-Q-E-S-E-C-V. So this part is really strongly conserved even between different subtypes. I've got to wait here while it's zipping up the files so I can output them. And then the next thing I want to do is repeat the analysis for the N1 sequences. So I, I need to go and find the oldest N1, which was from 1900. So while that's doing the zipping, I can go over to here, uh, go back to the previous search. So I still want to have neuraminidase, but I want it from H1 and N1. I want the neuraminidase, and I can set it to be before 1970. That well, shouldn't give me too many results. Mm, it does give me 86. Uh, now I need to arrange them in date order. So the oldest one they have in here is from Brevig Mission. Uh, they haven't got the 1900 one that is available in GSA. But that one should do. It can't have evolved very much between 1900 and then. So if I switch off those and just switch that one on and I can download that particular file and then I can use that one to do the next set of searches. So again, here's the faster file. So if I copy it and then say there's no known structure, paste it in, give it a job name, which is your remainder days and N1. My email address as usual, submit with the default parameters and let's see what this gives us. Okay, so that one's finished as well. So we can have a look at the results here. And can we see, probably this is the same, no, this is the same region here. This I-L-R-T-K-E-S-K, -E -E, which is 221. <laughs> So again, we've got a conserved area. If I compare it to this one, it's about 221. Yes, it is, apart from it's RN here and it's NN here. But uh, otherwise, yes, we've got some fairly consistent results and fairly consistent red patches. So this can warrant some further investigation to figure out what's happening in the blue areas and is that responsible for the differences between the different subtypes. So they both start M P M N P N Q. So is that responsible for the changes between the different uh, subtypes and responsible for the shift. All you'd need to do is download them all and look at the PDFs and go through them in detail.